And what I'm gonna run you through here now is a very simple um, force analysis of a cable state bridge. And what you can see here is an image of the cable state bridge that I built. And I'm going to draw this now in a very simplistic way so that we can throw our forces onto here for our analysis. Now I'm calling my cables T1, T2 and T3 using the T as in you know, the tension. Um, I placed mine a third of thirds and thirds along um, the deck, so I had 200 millimeters, but you'll have different values there potentially. Um, you do also need to know the height of your pylon. From uh, those two values, you can calculate these angles, theta one, theta two, and theta three. Final value we need is that where that weight force, that, that load was applied to our deck, and I've just made up a number of 320. Now, we're actually trying to figure out how much of this weight is being transferred as tension through those cables. Um, problem is, our deck will actually be able to hold some weight even without the cables. And what I found was uh, roughly the number of uh, mass that it could actually hold without it bending was about 500. So beyond 500 grams, that's when the tension starts to be applied through the cables. So what that means for our weight value is, we need to get the mass that was in our bucket, we times it by negative 10, and we plus five, five newtons from our 500 grams. So that's, we're taking that off. Now, from where we applied it, we need to figure out what those distances are between the two cables and the point of application of the load. And we're going to analyze the situation of these uh, two forces around that load. So our situation becomes quite simplified in a way where we're going to look at it in a much more smaller scale. And I want us to sort of think of it kind of like um, two strings holding up a deck without any other support. So it's almost sort of balancing it. And an even simpler way to do this is look at it in terms of its Y components. So those two cables, they're on an angle, they have Y components. And now this makes it really simple to analyze in terms of uh, forces in the Y axis. So obviously it's not moving up and down, so the net force must be equal to zero. So therefore I can say uh, T2Y plus T1Y plus the weight force, which will be negative, uh, equals zero. So from that I can rearrange it to get a expression for T1Y. Fortunately, there are uh, two unknown variables. The other unknown variable is T2Y. So we're going to need another way to analyze this so we can get a simultaneous equation going on. The way we're going to do that is with moments. So like I said, we've got to think of this as like a little balancing situation here. So T, we've got that weight force being pulled down, not quite in the center, and it's been balanced by the two forces on either side of it. So we've got uh, two moments there if we look at the net moment around W. Assume that W is our pivot point. So then we have M2 and M1, and they're obviously M2 is negative because it is going clockwise. So we've got, uh, we can bring those forces in now. T2 minus times 120 and T1Y times 80. Now, once again, you'll probably notice that we have two unknown variables. Uh, fortunately, I have an expression for TY1, so I'm gonna bring that expression into my equation, and now I only have one unknown variable. So I'm just gonna rearrange this a little bit, simplify it, and I end up with an expression that I can use because I know my value for W, which will be negative, don't forget that. So I'm gonna end up with a positive value there for T2Y. Now that I have a value for T2Y, I can put that back into my original expression for TY1. And then I'll only have one unknown variable again, and we then have those two Y values, which is awesome, because then I can use those to do a little bit of trig and find a value for T1, and obviously I can do the same for T2. Now that I've got uh, Y values, um, and I've got that hypotenuse, I can also get my X values using that simple trig again as well. And they're gonna be uh, useful values to us, not too far away. Now, because these cables are in tension, just by definition, tension applies uh, in both directions. So those same tension values will be applied to the pylon. And 
if we analyze this, we, we, we already figured out what those X values were for the tension and it's gonna be the exact same. So going to the right, those two values for the X apply because they're located at the same position, uh, are applied at that point. And obviously T3 is gonna have an X component that goes in the opposite direction. And you can probably guess where I'm going with this, that the net force in the X is equal to zero. So all those uh, magnitudes added up should equal to zero. And I can get, rearrange those and get a value for T3 equals X. Sorry, T3 X, I can get a value for that. So now we've got that value there, I can do a little bit of trig again and give me a value for T3. So now I've got the tension in all three. What I do wanna do now is find the compression going through that pylon. So to do that, I need to know what uh, components of those tensions, uh, all, all the components that are in the Y, which are gonna be pulling downwards. So I need to find the Y component of T3 using that little trig there. And I'm gonna add that to the other two components, which gives me a net force in Y. That net force in Y, TY1 plus T2Y plus T3Y will be equal to the compression force acting on the pylon. So it should be quite a simple process for you guys to just use your values, follow along with my analysis, and you should get um, uh, nice simple values for everything.